way is how you will secure your place with Christ. Men ought to always pray. Your view of God is tied to your sacrifice to Him. When a visitation of God we come into Zabulon, we come into Naphtali, the Bible says that the people that sat in darkness in the regions of death, unto them a great light will shine. Second Corinthians, can we all read together? 318. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. Just as the Spirit praise the Lord. But we all with unveiled faces are beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image of his glory. We are being transformed into the same image of his glory. Today I want to bring you a very brief word in all humility. Beholding Jesus is the title of my message. Beholding Jesus. You see, our generation has been fed many things in the form of preaching and teaching. And because the doctrine has been corrupted, men and women have forgot what was the original intent and purpose of God to create man. We all know the story of how man fell and how Jesus came back to save him. But what we have forgotten is how to go back. You see, Jesus came and did his part. But today we are being taught how to be prosperous. Today we are being taught many things that are not kingdom. I want to talk about beholding Jesus. Beholding Jesus. It is a strange thing when you stand among your peers and among your, your friends and you say, I was with Jesus. Can you imagine how they will be, the looks on their faces? It is not a common thing, isn't it? Praise the Lord. It is not a common thing. Or do, you, or, or do you do that when you are seated at Java, you're talking about politics and what and what, then in the middle somebody says, by the way, yesterday I was with Jesus. It's just a... Is it? It's not. Yet this was the intent of God. This is the plan of God. This is the desire of God. That we commune with him daily. And that as we look, as, as we look up to him, we are translated from glory to glory to become more like him. I want to start by giving you a very brief account of my own. How I met this man Jesus. Because how will you represent a man you have not met? How can you witness to what you have not beheld? But that is what the pulpit is filled with today. It is filled with men that have better English than mine. God has helped me because I came from Western. So my English is a bit... Praise the Lord. But don't be deceived. I bring you more than English. Paul said, I do not come to you with fables and stories so today i just want to have a conversation i'm not a very good preacher but i want to have a conversation with you because this is what god has laid in my heart are you willing to listen so if you will be keen if you'll open your heart you will receive something that is more than pastor sam if you open your eyes you will see something that is more than the man in front of you because today eyes will be open and people will see Jesus again. This is the intent of God. This is the intent of God. That we commune with him and that we walk with him. But the church today, the church is dead. Because we have been filled with sermons. We have been filled with people that can connect scriptures. Yet the Bible says we should be filled by the Holy Ghost. It is a pity. And so in all humility, I'll give you one account that I had with Jesus. It was not too long ago. 
we were having the Kingdom Come Conference. How many of you remember? Yes. And during the Kingdom Come Conference, I had purposed in my heart. I was in the worship team. No, I wasn't. I, I, I fired myself in the process. <laughs> I was meant to be in the worship team with my wife. But uh, eventually, as God decided, I ended up being part of the MC. You remember? So I was doing part of the MC work. And I asked Lord, I asked Jesus, what are you carrying for me in this season? What is it that is happening in this season that I can grab? Why am I not in the worship team? I tried to be in the worship team. I volunteered. Apostle, you know. Apostle was leading worship. I tried. It didn't work. It just didn't work. Eh? In fact, one time we were dancing here. Oh my. I hope those videos were, will never be shared. There was a time some young men were breaking their left legs. I tried. I thought this thing is easy. You just do. <laughs> then I knew age is catching up because my hair has been dyed black and my beard has been dyed black. You will not know if I am young or old. Praise the Lord. So when I came out, of, I was so sure that if I'm in the worship team, something will happen because I will be there. <laughs> you know, you need to have a strategy. I will be there close to the anointing. Now this thing is not working. So eventually I'm like, okay, fine. I accept it. It's not going to work. And I, I was instructed to stand by and possibly do part of the MCing work. And I humbly agreed. It was not in my thoughts. But be that as it may, one of the days we were, leading, uh, we were, we were having worship and uh, in between the sessions, you know, when you're the MC, you don't ascend too much because the program will also ascend with you. If you know what I mean. So you would ascend and you check the time, isn't it? So I would be doing that from time to time. Then I said, no. Somebody has set me up because if this is what I'm doing, how will I see him? <laughs> because throughout this time, my desire, I had told Jesus, if I just see you during this conference, if I just see you, it will be enough for me. If I just see you. That was my desire. And throughout those five days, that was my prayer. People prayed many things. I know people are praying for Range Rovers and whatnot. I was just asking God, if I just see Jesus again. You know, there is something about seeing him, that when you see him, you'll be dying to see him again. It's like somebody who has been injected with drugs eh? until you get the next dose you are mad you are cuckoos you cannot help yourself and that is where I was from the last time I saw him I was crazy I wanted to see him again so I realized this emceeing thing is not helping my it's not helping my cause so one of those days help me Jesus One of those days, just after I did the announcements, I went to my small corner. I was put in a small corner towards the left. And uh, Apostle and team were leading worship. And here I was, I think it was third, or four, third day or something. I was lifting my hands and I was saying, I'm already used to the fact that I will not spend too much time. I will not go too deep. So I lift my hands and I say, Lord, if I can see you. If I can see you. And in a flash, I saw Jesus in a flash, just like this. And he only said one word. He said, don't doubt. Don't doubt. Because it was a flash and it disappeared. He said, don't doubt. And I opened my eyes. Because I wondered, am I imagining because I want these things so badly? I opened my eyes and I looked around. I could see Apostle John and the worship team. I looked around and I closed my eyes again. And I was taken back to the same vision. And he said, don't doubt. He was a man, just like I'm standing here. And then I knew 
in my Noah that it is Jesus, even the Christ, that was speaking to me. But my heart was troubled because he said that and he disappeared. And so I went back to worship and I said, now the program to sort itself. Because this Jesus I have seen in a flash, I want to see him well. I want to see him well. And so I went into prayer and I said, Jesus, what doubt are you talking about? I've been praying and fasting. I believe. What doubt are you talking about? I want to see you well. And I persisted in prayer, in worship. I belos sabani miakupa lava sademeni kalive. Zaduva main kamendo voko brigada sademberia. If we can see you again, before long, I saw the Lord. I saw him walking towards me. I was in front row towards the left. But once I saw him come from, it looked like eternity. And he was walking. And I looked at him. It's as if he was dancing. His walk was like a dance. It was musical to a tune. And below, I could see that there was some hot substance. There was like trenches, pathways. He was walking on pathways. Below him, there were pathways. There was some hot substance that was burning. And it was rising up. There was smoke I could see. Then I realized Jesus was dancing the way this smoke was going. His movement was like that smoke as he was coming to me. And then it came to my knowledge that this smoke was actually the worship of the saints. In that worship setting we were in. He was actually, he was actually moving in the rhythm of that worship. But as he came closer, I found myself to be unworthy. And I asked him, Lord, are you serious you're coming? Are you serious? You're coming to me, me. You don't know me. I'm not worthy. But he was coming. He kept coming. And as Jesus drew closer to me, everything in me came alive. Everything. It's like, I don't know how to describe it. Everything in me could hear him. My, my hair, my nails, everything could hear him speak. Everything could respond to his light. And he drew closer, closer and closer in that dance. Before long, he touched me on my left side. And I was on the floor. If you remember that day. I was on the, how do I know? When I woke up some minutes later, I found myself waking up from like this. So I actually fell. You know, some of you fall systematically. You fall with a plan. I fell on my face. I wondered how I didn't break my nose. I fell on my face. And he said, he did some things to me there. And he said some things to me. In fact, when he touched my left side, a page of the Bible opened. Boom. And when the page opened like this, I was on the floor. And he revealed to me things that I am not permitted to speak. But why do I tell you these things? He told me, do not doubt. That's what he told me. Why do you doubt? And I wondered for long. Because later that night when we were driving home with my wife, I forgot. By there after that, I went, I did my MC work and I forgot. Later that night, when we were driving home on Thika Road, we were some guys here, sweetheart. We were with some people, my wife and some guys who were doing the instruments. And we were driving on Thika Road about midnight. Ay, 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 ay. I'm on Thika Road 100 kilometers per hour. I'm trying to get home. And I'm taken back to that vision. And my, I just break down 
tears start rolling down my face. I had forgotten what I saw. Then my wife looked at me and said, Hey, what's happening to you? Are you seeing a vision now? I said, no, it's not now. It's something that happened, but it's like I've been drawn back to it. And I wept. I was looking for somewhere to park because I was, I was breaking inside, remembering, remembering him. I'm trying now not to remember what I saw, as I tell you, because I will not be able to minister. On thicker road, we were looking for somewhere to park. She was like, no, park, park the fights. You will cause an accident. And I had to pull myself together. Long story short, I continued to just honor him and worship him in my heart. When we got home like this to the parking lot, she told me, now tell me. Oh my, I was taken back again. I was in tears all through because I saw him. Praise God. Buona Sifiwe. You know, <laughs> I'm not telling you this so that you think I'm so great. I'm actually the least. I don't say that because Bishop says it. I have understanding. You know, people just repeat things. No, with understanding. I tell you that because Jesus came to the least. He came to the least. So you might look at yourself and say, I'm so small. I've never had anything happen to me. You think you're not entitled, you're not worthy of it. I want to bring you a different message today. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Matthew 21, 21. Today people will see Jesus. Ah, you think I'm motivating you. Today, people will see Jesus. If your heart is open. If your heart is open, you'll see Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, If you have faith and no doubt, You will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, But also, if you say to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea. Verse 22. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Can you turn to your neighbor and tell him, Beholding Jesus. Beholding Jesus. Please give us verse 21. You know, this is a story of when Jesus was walking and he found a fig tree. And he was looking for fruit and he couldn't find. And he cast it. You know the story, right? So that we save time. The Bible says that he cast it. So this verse 22 and 21 is talking about how the disciples marveled. And if you read your scriptures, it says that they were shocked that it happened so soon. And so Jesus is answering and he's telling them. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and no doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but you can also speak to a mountain and it shall be removed. My emphasis is verse 21. If you have faith and no doubt. You know, when I was in my vision, Jesus told me, do not doubt. And I contended with him. Because I said, I have been praying and fasting. The reason I'm asking to see you is because I believe. What doubt are you talking about? So I want to bring to you five keys to beholding Jesus. If time permits, we'll cover all, but today I'm intending to look at three. Five keys to beholding Jesus. Key number one. To behold, you must believe. To behold, you must believe. What does it mean to have faith and no doubt? Do you remember the man, I think he was a centurion soldier who came to Jesus and his daughter had a spirit and uh, you know the disciples had tried to cast it out, is it in Mark? And they couldn't. So they came to Jesus, he came to Jesus and said, I brought this guy 
to your people and they couldn't sort it out. You remember? And then the Bible says that Jesus actually made a statement. He said, you unbelieving generation. Isn't it? You unbelieving generation. But that man said, if you can, cast this spirit out of my daughter and help me. And then he said, I believe, save my... Oh no, we are not in class. I believe, save my... So you see, you can have faith and doubt. I wonder how. I found out during that session, during that vision. You can have faith and doubt. If you have faith and no doubt. I believe, save my unbelief. You see, that word, no doubt, in the Greek, it comes from the word diakritit. Diakritit. D-I-A K-R-E-T-H-R-E-T-E. Diacritit. The root word for diacritit is dia and krino in Greek. Oh, now we're in class. If you didn't carry a... If you didn't carry a notebook. So the word do not doubt. I want to unpack it for you. Do not doubt. In Greek is dia, diacritit. And that word diacritit the root word are two. The root words is dear and crino. And dear means on account of. If you're writing, dear means on account of, because of, as a result of. And crino means determined. It means decision. It means judgment. I then understood that what this scripture means is that if you have faith on account of which you are determined, you will speak to this mountain. Praise the Lord. If you have faith on account of which you make a decision, then that matter is resolved. That word crino is what is used in judgment in courts, that they make a decision. They separate one item from the other. You are either guilty or not. A matter is determined by crino. So if you have faith as a result of which you have made a decision, then that matter is settled. You have passed judgment on that matter. I don't know how many times you have prayed for something and then after praying, after finishing prayer like this, you call your friend and say, I was uh, in need of uh, 3,000 for supper. Can you help me? And you're asking God for 3,000. Have you ever asked God for some, to do something for you and immediately you go out and do it for yourself? Huh? Yes. You have faith and no doubt. There is still doubt. If you pray for your head and say, I am healed in Jesus' name, and as you're walking, you're walking towards the kiosk to look for Maramoja, you still have doubt. <laughs> Praise God. Buana Sifiwe. Yes. So a lot of us have faith, but it is not purified. It has not been tested and tried. So it still has elements of doubt. But God is looking for men that will have faith. Full faith. And no doubt. Then you will begin to see things happening. You see, when Peter walked out of the boat, what did it take? It took faith, isn't it? But along the road, what happened? The Bible says he doubted. Then what happened? He sank. That is you and me many times. I'm saying, Jesus, I want to see you. I've been fasting. I want to see you. And he's telling me, do not doubt. I'm like, what language do you understand? I have faith. You have doubt. When your faith is absolute, is when you have placed judgment on your doubt. When your faith comes to maturity, when your faith is full, is because you have made a decision on that matter. 
Praise the Lord. It is when there is a sea in front of you and you need to pass as an Israelite and you say, oh God, make a way. And as you pray that, you start walking into that sea. That is faith that is complete. But if the children of Israel stood at the Red Sea and waited, there would be no party. Somebody's faith had to be complete. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, dear and crino. You see, this word crino, that part, that component of that word that connotes judgment, it also speaks of judgment based on comparison with certain standards. So when you go to a court of law and you are accused today, you'll be seeing court cases soon after the election. When you see that happening, they will be comparing these arguments with what? With the law, isn't it? With the constitution. That is what that word crino. You see, for you to move in faith, complete faith, you must come out of your carnality. You must come out of your carnality. You must move from that dimension to another. The dimension of faith. And you must compare the Jesus where he's standing, the dimension he's standing and where you're standing. This is why Paul says that we do not speak by earthly wisdom in Corinthians. But by wisdom, but by words taught by the spirit. Comparing spiritual to Oh, you're not here. Comparing spiritual to? Yes. You know, there's something in your makeup, in your DNA. There's something in your current makeup that is so spiritual. But we don't live up to it. So for your faith to be complete, look at the completeness that is in Jesus. Comparing spiritual to spiritual. You must step out of that boat and see the fullness of Jesus and rely on that. Second thing I learned about doubt is that um, doubt, because this is what I saw in the vision, doubt stands in the way of the fullness of faith. Doubt stands in the way of the fullness of faith. You see, faith is your part. It is your part to believe. But sometimes you believe and then there's like a voice that comes in there. Like, like Peter that stepped out of the boat. So the other thing I saw in this vision, and that I want to back up with this scripture, is that a portion of that journey is not on you. That journey from the boat, there's a portion of it that is not on you. You know people blame Peter and say, oh, people, Preachers have said, oh, he didn't have enough faith. They didn't hear from the Holy Ghost. The man had faith. You have you ever stepped out of the boat and walked three steps? <laughs> that man who say he didn't have faith. Have you ever tried? No, just try in your basin. You know what I'm <laughs> Try. <laughs> try in your little basin in the house and you'll see that there's a lot of faith it needs for you to do that. Peter had faith. But there is a portion of walking on water that is not on man. And so you must identify. You see, judgment is about separation. This is crino. Judgment is about separation, matter from matter. Praise the Lord. And so you must know at what point am I now relying on him? Pass this line. You can puff yourself up in faith and think you are the most faithful and then you realize you're still sinking. Because it is not by power, it is not by might, but it is by the Holy Ghost. So what I realized is I told Jesus in this vision, I told him, look, for me, as for me, I believe. As for me, I believe. I have faith. Help my unbelief. 
That is when I really saw him. Praise the Lord. So what am I telling you today? You must learn to make a decision and know. Now from here it is him. You don't make your own other arrangements to try and get out of that situation. No. You say, now from here, I'm drawing a line. This month's rent now is coming from God. I'm done calling people. I'm done doing what? I'm done trying to do it my own way. Now from here, from here. If you called me, if you called me, Lord, from here, it's on you. Praise God. If that job is yours, you will not bribe. You will tell God, me, I'm inter I am going for the interview. I'm doing my part. Then from here, draw a line. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, draw a line. Pass a judgment on your effort. And say, from here, it is on you. I came to bring to you a word. As you draw the line, you realize his strength. You realize how he carries men that have found their end. You see how Jesus carries men that have journeyed to their end. You must journey to the place and say, now from here it is you. It is you. I hope you know that faith is the currency by which you transact. So if you're going to transact with God on any matter, faith is the Kenya shilling. There is nothing you can give God. The Bible says in James, I believe that those you cannot please God without faith. Without God, it is impossible. Without God, to, it is impossible without faith to please God, isn't it? The second portion is what I want. It says that, um, and those that come to Him must believe that He is, and is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. The belief is on you. But there is a part your belief cannot go beyond. Oh yes. There is a part, your, your strength, it has, it has levels. It has limits. There is a place you are praying for five hours will not take you. Mm. There is a place you are fasting for seven days will not take you. There is a line beyond which you must just lean on him. Because men have prayed for one day and seen the Jesus. You have prayed for 30 days and not seen. They found the line. They crinoed. They found the line. They said, Lord, I will pray for one hour, but it is on you if I will see you. It is on account of mercy that men have seen Jesus. It is not on account of three hours prayer. It is good. You have the material that is used to create fire. So it will be easy for you to be lit. But my point, you must lean on him. So beyond believing, because there is a place that is beyond belief, you must lean on him. So men that have found their end will find Jesus. One time I was praying in my house a couple of years ago. I tend to document everything that I see. And I was praying and I was praying and I started ascending. That was before I joined this church. I started ascending. Those days I used to pray loud until my wife would come and say, they're trying to sleep. Reduce. You know, she had not joined, she had the love. Nowadays she's louder than me because of wall up. <laughs> Thank God for wall up. <laughs> Those days I used to pray loud and she would come downstairs and say, you know, for the kids, even the neighbors. <laughs> so one time I was praying. And please, take this. I say this in all humility. Like I've told you, we are all coming to Mount Zion. So I was praying one night, and I was caught up in the spirit, and I started ascending. This ascending you people talk about. <laughs> you know you think it's English. Ascending, I don't know what people think it is. You know there is an ascension. There is an actual ascension. Paul says he went to the third heavens. So there is an actual ascension. And so I was praying, and I started ascending. You know, ascending does not mean my, my, my voice becomes louder. Or, or I'm bending more. No. 
I started ascending. I felt my spirit rise. I felt my spirit lift. And you know when there is movement, I don't know what they call it in physics, when you're passing something, you feel, have, has someone has ever passed you without seeing them, but you feel something passed? So when you are ascending, you feel. You feel there are some things you're living down. Eh? You, you see those that know, no. You feel there is friction. There is something that is, you're living down and you're moving. That's what I felt. And I went, I went, I went, I went. I was, I was praying dangerous prayers. According to me then, before I joined Share the Love. Then I found people that pray. Eh? So I was praying and I was sure this is deep. I went, I went, I went. I got to a place. I passed realms. I got to a place I was stopped. And I looked to my right. Uh, the person that stopped me. It's like traffic police. There's traffic, eh? In the spirit realm. <laughs> I was stopped. I was stopped by a man. And he told me, you can't go past here. I said, what do you mean? I am a child of God. I am ascending. Okay, I didn't say that. <laughs> I just said, you know, I'm a son of the king. I'm a son of Jesus. I'm a son of God. I want to go higher. And he said, no. You don't have the right clothes. Yes. You don't have the right clothes. This is my third point. And I believe him. He told me, you are not clothed well. And this man had authority. I don't know him. Whether he was an angel or whatever. I know I saw a man that told me, you cannot go beyond here. And I looked at him. I said, what is wrong with my clothing? And he just pointed his hand like this to the right. And I saw tailors. I saw tailors that were, is it called sewing? They were sewing clothes. There. And they were called the clothes of righteousness. I wish I could tell you that after that I ascended. I did not. I did not. I went back. I went back. I did not have that cloth. It took me long, long, long before I understood what happened there. Then I realized after some time there are some things that are not on me. I hope you know that there is nothing you can do to acquire righteousness. There is nothing you can do of your own accord that can grant you righteousness. This thing is given. And so if you think because you, I, I had fasted, that time I had really fasted. And so if you think you've fasted for 10, 21 days and you will ascend to the throne, you will know there is a line beyond which your works I would say that our own righteousness is like filthy rags. You will find a traffic police who will tell you, Sir, with your seven days. No, go down. Go back. Go back. You are not clothed well. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, Beholding Jesus. You will not do it without righteousness. You will not do it without righteousness. You see, it is because we do things without understanding. We are ignorant. It took me time. When I understood that my righteousness is on Jesus, I went back. I went back. I will not tell you what happened. But it was a different story. Praise the Lord. And so to behold him, you must lean on his righteousness. You must lean on his righteousness. I want to tell you that simple men and women will see Jesus because of this truth. It is not so complicated. It is not the exclusivity of apostles and bishops and what. No. It is the exclusivity of those that lean on him. It is exclusive to those that actually rely on him. Praise the Lord. Are you being blessed? Yes. There's something I wrote down here. That when Jesus asked the centurion, 
He told him, if you can, help my child. Jesus actually replied and said, if I can. Do we, do we have that scripture? He says, if I can. I learned that um, with Jesus, it is not about abilities. It is about who he is. It's about who he is. And that's a footnote that I put on this sermon. That the belief in him is what matters. The belief in him, not his ability, is what matters. Because his ability follows his being. Bible says that those that come to him must believe that he is. That, that being that he is is what necessitates the reward. So you must believe in him and then the rewards will come. Some of you are praying to see angels. How many want to see angels here? Ah, you see. One time I was praying. I had heard some men of God saying they have seen angels. A friend of mine came and told me he has just seen an angel. See this angel business. Even my wife told me, me, I want to see angels. <laughs> so I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I've seen many things. I've not seen angels. You know what he told me? I could hear his heart. He said, what manner of child craves to see the servants instead of the father. I stopped. I have never prayed that prayer again, but I've seen them after that. You are craving to see the servants, not the father. What a lost generation. Let's go to Luke 11 verse 5. So we have read in uh, Hebrews 11 that those that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And that is my third point. Diligence. Diligence. As we go to Luke 11, as we go to Hebrews 11, diligence. Diligently seek him. And he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I found out that um, there has to be diligence to it. Diligence to it. Unfortunately, Christians want to wake up and become the giant of the day. You want to wake up and become the star. You are the top. You just woke up and you are the you're on Guinness Book of Records. You are the fastest runner. Praise God. That's what Christians believe in. You want to wake up and you are uh, the best singer there ever. Wouldn't, li wouldn't life be so nice if you could just wake up? You just wake up today. You are the best dancer. You did nothing. You invested nothing. That is not how life works. But you see, in our day, we have been told to receive. Isn't it? Like Bishop says, receive this and receive that. We have been taught to receive, not to work it out. You forgot the scripture that says, work out, work out your salvation. There is a working out. There has to be diligence. Whatever your call is, you will need to apply diligence. You will need to administer diligence if you're going to come to the fullness of it. You may be an apostle. You may be a prophet. Whatever title or anointing God has put on you, but you can be a waste if you don't apply diligence. Some of us want to pray like our bishop, our father in the Lord. 
You want to pray like him? Ask, ask the wife. She will tell you. There is diligence. You know, the word diligence means careful, persistent work or effort. Careful, persistent work or effort. Ask your neighbor who wants to become the best singer in the world. When were you last careful? When were you last persistent? When did you last put effort? It does not come by tapping. You cannot tap effort. No, you can't. You will need to put in some work. Praise the Lord. So I don't know what you want to become, but I want to remind you, if you're still praying for 10 minutes after supper and you sleep, you will tap into the dreams of your food. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We need to work it out. Just look at the great patriarchs. These men, they got to a point they said, we will not be given to tables. Some people thought that is proud. pride. Eh? But they said, we will continually be given to prayer and to the reading of the word, isn't it? And you wonder why shadows were healing men. These men did nothing else but pray and reading the word. And you, you want to come and tap. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Can we look at Luke 11 verse 5? Jesus talks about a story here that I want us to read together. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight, and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. Verse 6. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. Verse 7. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door now is shut. My children are with me in bed. I'm on my third dream. I cannot rise and give it to you. Verse 8. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is a friend, yet because of his friend's persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor persistence is part of the work. You must persist. You must persist. You must be consistent. There are things that will not be handed to you just because you look good, you have a nice suit. No. It will be because you persist. The problem with this generation is that there is instant coffee, there is instant money, there is Instagram. Everything is instant. So men have not learned to wait. Men have not learned to tarry. Men have not learned to persist. In my vision, I contended with the Lord. I told him, what do you mean? What do you mean? I have doubt. Me, I've been praying. My words to you is that I believe. What do you mean? You must contend if you're going to lay hold of the promise of God in your life. Some of us are living mediocre lives way below standard because we didn't persist. You're not in service because the day you came, somebody looked badly at you. You never came back. You're not coming for Kesha because brother so-and-so did not greet you. So you will try and pray alone in the house. You did not persist. Some of us were told by beings, go down. We still went back. Yes. We went down, but we looked for time to go back. Some of us were told, you cannot sing. You cannot preach. We never gave up. 
I've been in churches where men are too holy to greet you. Like this. You see? They, they can't greet you. They are full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know what you do? I'm telling you a real life story. I know of a prophet. I will not mention the name. That I served under. And I was so passionate about Jesus. Way back, over 10 years ago. And I wanted to. This woman, this person, had such grace in the things of the Spirit. And I learned a lot from that person. One time, I stretched my hand. And there was no hand to meet mine. Mark you after that, that person will stand on the pulpit and the things that will happen, you will know there is God in heaven. Mm, I'm coming to my third point. You will know that there is a God in heaven when they stand on the pulpit. But I knew if I... Oh, I feel the, the anointing has come. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I knew that if I don't come back, that part of my journey is in error. So I went back. My wife tells me she's here. She tells me, where was she Dayako ni moja? You don't know when people are abusing you. You realize later. <laughs> By the way, if I was not married to this woman, I would be dead. She's the one who comes and says, no, no, you, you. But I learned that when I was young, in my early days. You can spit on me. You can do whatever you want to do. I am given to the Lord. If there is something you're carrying that belongs to me, oh, you can step on me. You can do whatever you want to do. Meanwhile, my eyes are on that thing you're carrying that belongs to me. And the day I get it, I will go. But before I get it, ah, step on me. Step on me, abuse me, don't greet me, do whatever you want to do. I will stay. God is looking for men that can stay. Because you see, this mandate we have, you will not be able to carry it out if you have no resilience. You can't. We started by reading how the disciples were threatened and they still went back. What is it that kept them doing that? It is diligence. It is persistence. They stayed. They stayed. Where have you stayed? When did you last stay? When did you last stay? Oh, she talks about me. Stay. She doesn't like me. Stay. Yeah. They don't greet me. Stay. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm talking about somebody's destiny here. Yes. Stay. I'm not talking, talking about this church. No. Because we have online viewers and they need to stay also. Yes. So whatever it is. You're waiting for an angel to come from heaven and tell you, what shall I do? Stay. I came to tell you to stay. Because the Bible says, after Israel travailed, Rabbi Kakupa Lavena, after Israel travailed, it gave birth. Not everything is birthed laughing. Mm -mm. If your story will be, I woke up, I was born, I, I grew, I became a millionaire, just like that. Uh, not Jesus, not the one I know. There is a process. But in that process, you must stay. You must tie yourself to the horns of the altar and say, Lord, I will stay here. It will be hot, but I will stay. 
There are things you see about people. Find a place to keep them. That is a secret I learned long ago. You know, my wife, we've been married for a couple of years. We are not very old. Eh? People think we are very old. No, we are not Methuselah. <laughs> but in our becoming, there were days we would argue. Argue. You know, a real argument that, watch out, na Iraq, na. That, those guys are not arguing. We would argue. If you capture that energy and put it in a missile, you become a superpower. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We would argue, and after arguing, I will go downstairs to pray. And I'll be katabela vusia tabedia. One day she came. Wewe kazi yako ni kunichokoza lafu una rabaduka? No. Don't pray. Don't pray. Don't. What are you praying? What are you praying down there? You are, you are not. If you are not married, you might not understand. Yes, she came. She said, what are you praying? Come. No, don't pray. Come up. Kucha tulale. Praise the Lord. My third point. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. You need to be able to argue with people and then go and see Jesus. Until you've gotten there, you did not stay, you did not believe, you did not lean on him. It's a progression. I'm not just telling you stories to laugh, no. Until you can argue with someone and go downstairs and see Jesus, you did not believe, you did not stay, you did not lean on him. So you cannot even get to the fourth part. Guard your heart. Bible says that uh, in Matthew 5, no, let's start with Psalms 4.23. Psalms chapter 4 verse 23. Sijui leo ni talala wapi? After that statement. Uh, Mom, please. I saw, I saw you have a big house. <laughs> you need to accommodate me. Psalms 4.23, please. It says, guard your heart. Guard your heart, as we wait for the right scripture. With all diligence. 4 verse 23. Sorry, Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows issues of life. People have not learned how to guard their hearts. A bad comment from your boss messes your day. That day, whatever you wanted to do, you will not be able to accomplish. Isn't it? Learn to guard your heart. That is what I was saying about that story. It's deliberate. I looked for any other example. It's not coming. But if you can argue with your wife, you know argument, not this one of argument, real argument. If you are a couple, you know what I'm talking about. I normally say that the people who are truly born again are the ones who are married. <laughs> Until you get there. If you're married and you're still saved for long, you are truly saved. You see, the people are laughing they have been married for long. <laughs> you are for real saved, isn't it? Because marriage will test your salvation. That thing you're doing on the pulpit, uh, it will be tested in the house. It will be tested, like really tested. Yes. There are some things I do. My wife tells me, man of God. <laughs> then I go back and say, okay. So I was, as I was saying, <laughs> yes, you will be tested. But what I meant really is this. 
if you can guard your heart, you don't know why the Bible says you should guard the heart. You see, like we said, faith is the currency by which we transact on a very sober note. The heart is the tarmac on which God lands. If God is to visit you, he will land in your heart. And so some people are calling on God with true faith. But like an airport, like a plane that tries to land. You know when, when you want to land a plane, you must find a runway. So if there is no runway, there is nowhere to land. Some of us, we are calling on God. He has nowhere to land. Your heart is not right. I used to love uh, action movies. I still do. But I don't have time to watch. I lost my appetite. I used to watch action movies and there was a time, I think the movie is called Survivor or something. People were going to be rescued. But there was nowhere to land. There was willingness. There was finances. There was resources, ability. But there was nowhere to land. So you cannot be rescued. How many things are you calling on God for? And he has nowhere to land it. He has nowhere to land it. Oh God, use me, use me, send your anointing. Okay, I'm coming. He's searching. He cannot find where to land that anointing. Why? Because you pray for three hours and you still gossip. Mm. Where will he land? The gossip will be filling the windshield. He can't see where to land. Have you seen great men of God? Big church. Big influence. They have never seen him. Yes, they have never seen him. Because to build a great church, you just need to be a strategist. You need to have a good strategy. You will build a big church. Bishop says it here every time. Matthew 5, say, 5, 8, the beatitude. It says, blessed are they pure in heart, for they will see God. Not blessed are those that pray for 10 hours. Eh? Not blessed are those that fast for 7 days. I give you a living example. Our senior apostle, Arome Osai, when he came to Kenya in June and he anointed our bishop, I know many of us were saying, ah, Bishop deserves it. He's been praying. This man has been praying. This man does not sleep. We know he prays, isn't it? We all thought he deserves it. And one time I'm looking at that video again and the Holy Ghost reveals something to me. I played it back. I, play, I played it back many times. Say, oh my God. People missed this. Because even me, I missed it. Do you know what he said? His heart is right. He could find many things to say. Me, if I was to anoint bishop, as an example, eh? <laughs> I want to be clear. <laughs> if I was to anoint bishop today, I would say, bishop, because of your prayer life, I'm going to anoint you. Isn't it? Or because of your giving. The guy is a giver. I can't, there are many reasons I can find to bless him. God did not look at any of those. He said his heart is right. So some of you think because you give a big tithe, that anointing will come on you. You will wait. You will wait. It will not come. Man of God, you think you will have an impact because you're giving all your finances to the church. There is a way. That way is purity. They that have a pure heart, they shall see him. You can come for all the cashers you want. You will not see him. If your heart is not pure, you can give all the donations. You give all the way to Rwanda, Uganda. If your heart is not right, 
you will only hear it as a story. You hear a young man from nowhere coming here and saying, I went up, I was told to go down. The heart. The heart has to be right. So can you check your heart? Check your heart. If any, that is the airport where he lands. If your heart is not right, let me help someone. Your thoughts, your thoughts are louder than your voice. Your thoughts. In the spirit realm, it is not English we speak. That is not the language of God. Your thoughts, louder than your words. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your thinking. That thought, you're thinking, ah, we are Najifanyanga. That thought, just cut it. Me, when I was training myself how to think, eh? when I found myself thinking something, you know, sometimes I think like a cartoon. You will bear with me. So when I was training myself by the Holy Ghost, when I was being trained how to think and how to guard my heart, when I find I've thought something, I say that one, God, before it reaches heaven, come. I bring it back. I say, I did not think that one. I did not. I did not. I bring it back. Bible says, bringing all things to the subjection of the lordship of Jesus Christ. I bring you truth. Bring all things under the lordship. Bring that thinking, that thought process, bring it under him. And if you find your slide, be quick to bring it back. Say, Lord, help me. That is how purity is built. It starts in your heart. You say, oh, I've never slept with a woman. Jesus said, if as much as you think, you have already committed adultery, isn't it? So it means the church is full of sinners that are waiting to see him. It will not happen. It will not happen. Can you check your thoughts? Before it finishes. You know, the mind is wicked. I hope you know that. That is why Paul said, Be ye transformed through the renewing of your mind. So the mind needs constant churning and constant laundry through the word. So in your exercise of bringing your mind to subjection, you must catch yourself doing the bad thing. Catch yourself. Don't wait for the devil. Catch yourself. You know, the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. Before he finds time to accuse you, catch yourself. Say, this one, Lord, I am wrong. This one, help me. There are things in my life I have gone to with the Lord. I've gone to the Lord with. And I've said, Lord, I'm struggling in this area. Help me. Help me. Take, cut this thing. I don't want it. Cut one. Cut, cut, cut. I don't know where it came from. Maybe I know, but please, just cut this thing. And that is how you start building stamina in your runway for heavenly things to land. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, guard your heart. And so tonight, I'm used to preaching at night, so when I say tonight, you bear with me. I do my YouTube videos at night. So, this morning, I give you keys. What was number one? Hey, I can hear papers. People are writing, yeah? So I've tried. Okay, okay, I thank God. Number one is, believe. Keys to beholding. Number two. Hey, shh. So it's true when Bishop does that. I was wondering what he means. Number two is what? Lean on his righteousness. Number three. Diligence. Number four. Guard your heart.
you probably came here to to hear a powerful sermon from Bishop John C. W. I am no match. I saw that man, eh? Where he's, he is. So I know what I say. He's not humility. You know, people, some people are humble, but they are humbly proud. <laughs> so when I say I'm not where he is, no, I'm not trying to praise the, our bishop. No, I know. I know where he is. So when I say you came for a powerful sermon, I know also what I'm saying. I'm not just using cunningly devised fables. I am not one that carried a powerful message. But I give you Jesus. That's all I bring to you, my generation. I bring to you Jesus. Because if you can find him, you'll find all truth. If you can find him, you'll find your deliverance. If you can find him, you'll find your freedom. If you can find him, you'll find your purpose. You don't need a good sermon. You need Jesus. You don't need a powerful prayer. You need Jesus. This is what we need. That which our eyes have seen. That which we have held with our hands. Of that we speak. The disciples said, such as I have, I give to you. Unless I experienced him, I would not be able to talk about this. It will be a story. Of what use? I have seen him. I have seen him. I testify to this truth. Jesus lives. And in case you're wondering how this will happen, Bible says that after he rose for 40 days plus, the man was seen. He was hanging around, eating fish. A man. You, you're waiting for an apparition. You're waiting for some smoke and lightning. No. No. That is not how he will come. He is a man. He will walk to you the way I am walking to you. He will walk to you like this. You can touch him. You can talk to him. The disciples were told by one angel, this Jesus you have seen, the way you have seen him go is the same way he will he will return. What is happening in between? Because the Bible has not told us. It means that he continues to exist in that form. A man who ate fish with his disciples. So I don't know what you're waiting for. But the man that will come to you is a man you can see, touch, hold. I bring you truth. Even Jesus the Christ. He desires to visit men in this generation. He told me that he will visit Kenya in this year. And men will begin to see the Lord again. For Kenya is ripe for the revelation of the Son of God. Even Jesus the Christ. You shall behold him. And you shall become more like him. Being translated from glory to glory. It shall be so. And so, Father, this is our prayer tonight. That you may come and reveal yourself. We are tired of good sermons, Lord. We are tired of good English, oh God. We are tired of fables. We are tired of con men. All we want is you. All we want is you. Me, I just want you. I, I just want you. You are all that I want. What more could I ask for, Lord? If I can only see you, Kabia Selebenai, Lekoso Koprika Tada, Mendes Eliadela, 
Help me, Lord. Help my unbelief. If I can see you, Sakia Balo, Obre Nagila, rise to your feet. Rise to your feet and call on him for yourself. It is that hour that the Lord visits Kenya. It is that hour. Will you show us your true self, Lord? Will you come to us by yourself, Holy Ghost? We ask of you the promise of the Father. Show us Jesus. Give us Jesus. Give us Jesus. Give me Jesus. I give me Jesus. Said I'm tired of myself. We want to see you, Lord. I said I'm tired of myself. We're tired of ourselves, Jesus. I said I'm tired of myself. We are tired of ourselves. I said I'm tired of myself. We are tired. We are tired. Give us Jesus. Give us Jesus. Give us Jesus. Give us Jesus. Oh God, we've had enough. We are tired of us. We have heard of stories of how you came long ago. We have heard of stories, oh God. This our day, Sakia Pelena. Visit us in our day, oh God. Write a new story today. Write a new story, Elohim. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Write a new story, oh God. Write a new story. Use my life to write a new story, oh God. Story, that you visited Lord. Kenya. Amen. Because a man looked up to you, oh God. Yes, Lord. Because a man leaned on your righteousness, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. I said, I'm tired of myself. We are tired, Jesus. We are tired, Lord. Ah, Come to Jesus. Somebody raise a cry, raise a cry, raise a cry, raise a cry. We cry. Have you not had enough? We cry out, Lord. Have you not had enough? Are you not tired? Are you not tired of stories of people's testimonies? Are you not tired of your struggles? Are you not tired? I am tired, Lord. We are tired. Lord. I need to see you. We need to see you, Lord. We need to see you, Jesus. We need to see you, Lord. We want to have faith and not doubt. We want to see you, Lord. Save my unbelief. Yes, Lord. Save my unbelief. Save us. Save my unbelief. Let the holy angels of heaven begin to descend upon this place. We call on you. You said us. 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 Father, you said us. We ask of you. We ask of you, Lord. Open our eyes to behold you. Open our eyes to behold you. Open our eyes to behold you. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our ears, oh God. Open our eyes, Yeshua. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see you, Jesus. We want to see you, Jesus. Open our eyes, oh God. Open our eyes, oh God. We want to believe and not doubt. We want to believe and not doubt. Eshada da badala via la presata. Adi bashada da dia la prosati abeka. Edebe di bafia la prosata batialas. Oh God, help us, Jesus. Help us, help us, help us, Lord. Jesus, help us, help us, Jesus. Jesus, help us. 
help us, Lord. Help us, help us, help us, help us. Help us, oh God. Help our unbelief. Help our doubt. Help us, Jesus. Help us, oh God. Help us, help us, Jesus. We are Sit, I'm tired of myself. Spirit, take over. I said, I'm tired of myself. Spirit, take over. I said, I'm tired. Somebody pressing, pressing, pressing. Be diligent, be diligent, be diligent, be diligent. Tarry, 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 tarry on him. Wait on him, wait on him. Lay it all down, lay it all down. Your righteousness is nothing. It is like filthy rags. Lay it down, lay it down. Lay it down. Abandon, abandon yourself. Abandon yourself. Abandon yourself. You will see him. You will see him. Abandon yourself. Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. Seco pecala bari seleva, ale breco solia, la via to, ya sacata le brena, le si ete le brecuta, la via soca, rabele cosicete, reminiatala, canto sacupelegeriata, eta la precotocobia, yanda la precetelia. Yeso kotolo banai ansikata la bregoa. Lift men, lift men, lift men, Lord. Lift men this morning. Lift the standard. Raise the standard. 
raise the standard holy ghost raise the standard raise the standard a new wave kapale kotonia I am Baliko Yes, Lord. yes, Lord. yes, Lord. yes Lord. A binu jove ramos a sali a dembena I pimbe tapane A kundo ramos a veli a kabe I leven sata A i pimbe ko penua Ropotom mi lefe repenia Sa vila me de A i pinto kome Junje veles parane God is looking for hearts Is your heart dry? 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 He's about to move here. He's about to move. Is your heart right? Is your stomach ready for the landing? Is your stomach ready? He's about to move. He's about to we believe, help one believe. We believe, help our Jesus is coming to these people. Jesus is coming to his people. Jesus is coming to his people. Is your heart ready? Is your heart ready? Is May your eyes be open. May your eyes be open. May your eyes be open. See him. See him. See him. See him. See him. I pray back up. I told you he's looking for a landing. He's looking for a landing. Where will he land? 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 Araina and Tua, Jolly and Lana Vidaya. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Vela so pari ale prena ribos sabela robi rada kamia telebe sekete pe ekotoli abarai let rivers break forth from you let rivers break forth sabia kotolo kopela rapele kotoko biate rivers let them break the bonds 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 in the name of jesus 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 is looking for somewhere to learn if your heart is right if your heart is right 
If your heart is right, if your heart is right, he will give you something. If your heart is right, he will release on you something. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Increase the intensity. Increase the intensity, Lord. Increase the intensity. In the name of Jesus, you will see again. You will see again. You will see again. Yes. Yes. For some of you, it has already started. For some of you, he has already landed. He is still looking for who? He is still looking for the heart. He is still looking for the heart. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Holy Ghost. Do it, Holy Ghost. Do it, Holy Ghost. Do it, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Be still and receive him. Receive new grace. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. New grace. New grace. New grace. New grace. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let your light shine in men again. In the name of Jesus. Light, I life. In the name of Jesus. New light. New light. New light. Overcoming light. In the name of Jesus. And it flows through you now. Ekabela sukoriada la vedia celebedi akatale brenata. Receive new grace for new levels, for new levels, for new levels. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes, standards are being raised. Standards are being raised. You will see you have come from far. You will see how high he has lifted you from today. Because he has found somewhere to learn. Because he has found somewhere to learn. Land in my heart, Jesus. Land in my heart, Holy Ghost. Land in my heart, Holy Ghost. We receive of your works. We receive of your works. We receive of your spirit, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus.